So our next talk, um, well, if you've ever played Farmville, um, you, you owe a debt of gratitude or he owes you a, a debt of time uh, to Zhao Yang, who is our next speaker. Um, Zhao is now um, working at, uh, is the co-founder of Better Works. He's an advisor to SV Angels and a number of other funds and, and firms. Um, Zhao is here to talk to you today about that thing that we all, uh, in somewhere in our minds, even if we're building great sustainable companies, think about, and that's the M&A. So how to, to get yourself acquired. So please welcome Zhao Yang to our stage. Hello. How are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to talk about, uh, so I usually talk about uh, kind of uh, engagement uh, and uh, uh, viral loops and kind of uh, social media uh, applied to a variety of kind of uh, different verticals. Um, but you know, today I'm going to more so specifically focus on, on uh, uh, how to get acquired. Uh, before I went through the process on uh, selling my company to Zynga as well as uh, being on the merger and acquisition side at Zynga, um, I had no idea what it took to get acquired. Uh, you know, I just thought it was a magical thing. Someone just came, came in one day and, you know, give you a check and uh, wanted to buy your company. Uh, it turns out that's not really the case. Um, so I'm going to dive into a little bit on the specifics. Um, so you, you know my background uh, and from the introduction, but generally speaking, I started a company called My Mini Life, uh, and we created two products. Uh, one was a uh, virtual world product that you can create and decorate your virtual environment. Uh, it was intended to be a, a, a more self-expressive social network, and then we created this uh, farm product, uh, and we were acquired by Zynga uh, in 2009. Uh, we subsequently became the uh, technical platform for all of Zynga, uh, you know, powering, you know, Cityville, Frontierville, uh, the distributed system in the back end as well as the front end. And then uh, post Zynga, worked on a variety of things. One of the things I worked on was uh, 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 Zynga corporate strategy and uh, mergers and acquisitions. Uh, so it became very, very intimately involved with uh, buying companies uh, and. Uh, uh, the overall kind of a, a direction of the company. So uh, there's there's a, there's a couple things uh, you know I want to talk about with M and A. Certainly I can talk about the process and everything, but uh, the starting point is always extremely extremely important. You really have to get into the mind of the acquirer. You have to know what they're looking for, um, and you know you have to kind of a uh, have a num number of things on your side to basically prepare. So, M&A isn't exactly like, uh, you know, any other kind of a buy and buying and selling things. It's a uh, quite an involved process, and and you know, for obvious reasons, it's a uh, it's a business. But you know, why does it actually even happen? Um, so generally speaking, uh, merchants and acquisitions basically support a, a core strategy on the, on the buy side of a given company. So um, what happens is usually there's a, uh, there's a department that's called uh, strategy and cor corporate development. Um, and their role is to basically work with the uh, CFOs, CEOs and uh, the entire company to dictate what is kind of about the strategic importance of the company. Um, and, and there's a couple, uh, couple of uh, strategies that the company obviously wants to go into. Um, you know, obviously everything is revenue focused. Uh, uh, you know, ultimately the goal is revenue, but there's a lot of ways you can basically get there. And this, this goes into kind of a, a variety of different industries. Um, 
but generally speaking, uh, you you can go after kind of a, a different different things. You can go after distribution channels. You can acquire distribution channels. You can acquire uh, kind of a, a complementary products uh, to complete a product suite. Uh, you can acquire kind of a highly engaging kind of a products like uh, you know Instagram and so on and so forth. Um, but generally speaking, it's a, it's a thesis on a given market, uh, and in context of uh, Zynga, um, you know, you would think it's entirely game focused. Uh, you know, kind of about creating, uh, you know, looking at uh, new games. But even Zynga focus on uh, distribution channels. Uh, uh, things like, you know, what are the cross pr promotional capabilities of, you know, mobile? What are the cross promotional capabilities of on the web? How do you basically uh, distribute further to kind of uh, international audiences? Um, and especially at that time, kind of about 2009, 2010, uh, uh, Facebook was pervasive. Uh, but uh, you know, there are certain areas, uh, including uh, Russia, Japan, China, Korea, uh, and other areas where you Facebook didn't have as great of a penetration. So. So you know you basically have to figure out you know what your go-to-market uh, strategy is uh, for those areas and how do you basically support it on the technology side on the infrastructure side uh, and uh, uh, and again this basically varies uh, highly highly depending on uh, the different types of uh, industries and the t different types of companies um, in in enterprise software you typically go after product suites uh, meaning. Uh, uh, you know, like the recent Yammer acquisition. Uh, the Yammer acquisition was designed to basically uh, be the backbone of social for all of Microsoft. Um, but, but generally speaking, there's a lot of goals for and strategy for the given department, but you have to build a relationship with uh, the corp dev as well as the strategy team, as well as the uh, uh, you know the founders, the CEOs, uh, way ahead of time before you get acquired. Otherwise, you don't actually know what they're looking for. Um, you know, because it's one thing to basically, you know, build a company just for the uh, hell of it. It's another thing to basically, uh, specifically aim at a space that is both strategically important for uh, the industry, the company, as well as uh, uh, for a number of the players, basically there. And 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 why do you know companies buy uh, other companies? It's it's really for uh, acceleration of their strategy. Uh, if they they basically believe that uh, you, if they basically believe that um, uh, the best way to basically uh, accelerate, uh, you know, nine months, ten months, and whatever it be, uh, they'll basically do it. Um, and and that sounds uh, fairly obvious. Thing, but you know, companies will basically acquire teams uh, uh, for tens, hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, whereas most of the value is just specifically for the team, um, and that might be hard to believe for most people because you know they basically compare it to uh, recruiter cost or or whatever. It be it's like, oh, well, why don't you just let the company uh, uh, die and and uh, instead of buying the entire company. Um, but it's, it's all about acceleration. Um, and generally speaking, you talk about uh, acceleration in kind of a variety of funds. Kind of a, uh, there's, domain, there's domain knowledge uh, on kind of about the given area. Uh, there's there's a kind of a team and there's kind of a culture fit. Um, but once the, uh, once the given company, like for example, Google, Salesforce, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, I think uh, generally, generally want to go into a given kind of a strategic area. Um, they they go through evaluations process. Do I buy? Do I build? Or do I partner? Uh, partnering is more business development. Building is basically uh, much more organic, and buying is uh, you know very obvious. But the reason why I basically uh, say that is is some of the, uh, there's a relationship building process uh, before you actually go through uh, the M&A. Uh, uh, because it's not like basically someone basically showing up on your door with uh, basically 
uh, you know, a check and basically saying, hey, I want to buy your company for uh, X million dollars and, uh, you know, are you, are you okay uh, doing that? Um, you know, it's really uh, building your uh, uh, relationships through business development deals, uh, through kind of uh, these conferences and events, as well as the people that are basically connected to your company. Uh, one of the most common ways to basically do it is uh, through introductions to your investors. Um, generally speaking, uh, uh, angel investors as well as uh, venture capitalists basically have uh, a specialized network that will uh, and connections to all the M&A departments uh, for any given company. Uh, you know, because the typical conception is basically that uh, you know you go and uh, you basically uh, get a buy side or sell side. Uh, you know, uh, investment banker, and then he'll pitch you to everyone. Everyone, you know, and that's certainly one way of basically doing it. Uh, the other way to do it is to basically get more and more kind of uh, investors, advisors related to your company. Um, and generally speaking, uh, they'll they'll have kind of uh, 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 connections to the right right people. Um, and the other thing is, you know, certainly kind of a. Uh, uh, you know, entre entrepreneurship is basically all about the team. Um, and, um, and when you, when you uh, and this kind of manifests itself in a variety of ways. Um, when they look at acquiring uh, the company, they really look at what you've previously done uh, as, a, uh, as an approximation and heuristic of the quality of the team. Um, and, and generally, and generally speaking, um, you know, the team as well as kind of a, uh, the personalities, the process, the way uh, uh, you basically execute uh, uh, for your given company uh, allows it to be kind of a, whether it's a culture fit, whether it's a technology fit, or whether it's just kind of a, a general uh, team quality fit. Um, and this is really, really important. So even though, even, uh, even if you basically line up a lot of kind of uh, uh, the business development as well as kind of uh, the partnership and a lot of the relationship with your investors and advisors, um, it may just get screwed up here um, because, uh, you know, uh, it ultimately it's basically the team that basically gets kind of uh, acquired. Um, and, and generally speaking, what you want to do is you want to build up the relationship way, way, way ahead of time. Um, and uh, um, because otherwise, uh, you know, I mean, there's certainly cases where, you know, people show up on your doorstep and basically uh, you automatically start a uh, process. But, you know, let's say, for example, one acquirer uh, comes to your doorstep and wants to buy you. Um, because it's the M&A kind of a merger and acquisition market, it's not a, a liquid uh, a stock. So, so basically, um, the price that they want to pay for you uh, may not be the market price. And in order for you to kind of uh, get a uh, bidding war going or a kind of uh, some kind of uh, auction going with multiple companies, you really need uh, kind of uh, relationships with uh, multiple, multiple kind of uh, companies. Um, you know, basically, uh, part, of, part of what I basically alluded to was... Uh, uh, um, you know the, uh, uh, you know what's the value of the company, and um, and uh, there's you know once you build a relationship uh, and and someone c comes to you, um, you basically have to figure out you know what it's uh, worth and and generally speaking, uh, 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 what the strategic what the strategic imperatives of the companies are. Um, but, but generally speaking, uh, engineers are extremely, extremely valued, valuable to uh, companies. Um, engineers uh, in a given strategic, hard technical strategic area, uh, uh, you can basically do anywhere from half a million to 1.5 million per head. And then again, this is not like, you know, you know one year out of college kind of, kind of a, a thing, but um, you know, very well trained kind of uh, technical engineers, um, you know, command a premium in, uh, in the market since it's so difficult to basically uh, hire. Uh, as well as the management team. 
the management team, as well as the engineering team. So if you basically have a technology, you have a team, you have a product, um, and you don't have revenue, it's based, the valuation is based on other metrics. It's based on uh, a team, uh, it's based on, based on the strategic area, uh, you're kind of a product and uh, area, it's based on your uh, user count. Uh, sometimes user counts, um, if it's a given strategic area, it can vary from $100 to $250 per user. And, uh, um, and you know, there's the old, old, always the usual kind of uh, multiples, which is, which is uh, 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 earnings. Uh, you know, how much are you making, and then what's the, what's the uh, multiples on that. But generally speaking, like, unless you're making kind of a significant amount of uh, 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 revenue, uh, you know, on the order of 10 to $50 million, uh, you'll generally be uh, valued on something else, so. Yeah, so, so once you figure out kind of about the valuation for your uh, company, you generally uh, start a kind of a dating process. Um, there's multiple companies that you basically want to talk to, and it's really a dating process uh, because most people think, think it's all about uh, the money, the highest bidder, and whatever it be. But what ends up happening is uh, the management team actually wants your company to stay on. Generally, generally speaking, if it's a big acquisition or it's a very strategic one, they want you to stay on. Um, and, and the thing is, you don't want to be miserable afterwards. So, um, so it's, 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 again, it's very much like dating. You want to make sure the price is right, but you want to make sure uh, the management right, is right. You want to make sure everything is right about the given company. And since it's, a, it's often a mix of kind of a cash and stock, uh, you want to make sure that that given kind of a company is headed off to a given direction. You know, uh, you know um, certainly there's more kind of a, a slashing and burning in the private equity side, but you know, generally speaking, I have heard of, of, uh, of uh, you know, there's various M&A kind of a, a horror stories, and this process is pretty important. And uh, you know, and generally speaking, once you basically hook a one uh, term sheet uh, from one uh, given company, you can basically start a bidding war. Um, and you know, often kind of uh, uh, the buy side uh, people will obviously for uh, uh, not like it. Um, you know, when when I sold my company in 2009, uh, there were basically uh, four companies. Uh, you know, it looked like an eBay auction, uh, and uh, uh, and then we also had an investment offer. But what, when it, w the catalyst was always one one company uh, providing a term sheet, and uh, and because it's a very you know it's not like a, a the stock market or it's not like any liquid kind of a asset. When one one person basically decides to put put in a bid, it basically uh, uh, does a forcing function toward everything else. So. And then finally, um, you know, there's a lot uh, about kind of about the post-acquisition process and everything else, but you really, really have to make sure uh, everything is, uh, is uh, uh, extremely, extremely uh, kept in tight. Um, you know, otherwise, otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, you know, it won't be good. So, um, again, you know, there's a lot more details in kind of a, uh, the M&A, but the, that's a very high level uh, overview of, uh, of uh, uh, the M&A process. It's certainly something I didn't know w before I went through it, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully you got something out of this. So. So, anyone have any uh, brief questions? Uh, it, I think it's generally helpful for uh, kind of uh, driving up the price. In, in certain cases, their, their incentives aren't really aligned with yours. Uh, and if you, if you can get it done without kind of an M&A broker, uh, it's generally a little bit better. Um, but it just it really depends on the investment banker. Some, some M&A guys drive a lot of value, uh, commensurate with their compensation. Uh, but uh, it highly, highly depends on uh, the M&A department uh, as well as kind of uh, the specific bank. So,
Okay. Thank you.